That's live. Let me go back to Zoom. Record. Record on this computer. And then switch mode. Make sure all those are checked. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church Praise and Worship Service. We're continuing on our Lenten series and our presentation and exploration of the Stations of the Cross. So whether you are viewing this from the pulpit or sitting in the pew, we hope that this will help you on your Christian journey. So let's continue with the Stations of the Cross.
Yeah, I understand. Huh? Yeah. I'm doing the veil down. Um, so? Yeah. This concludes this portion of our praise and worship service. I hope that the images that you saw today helps you to understand the price that was paid for you on the cross. And for each and every person, whether you're sitting here or whether you're on Zoom or on Facebook or wherever you are in your Christian journey, please remember you're more than welcome to contact the church office at 313-341-5320 and ask any questions our Reverend Anthony Estes will be more than happy to help you on your Christian journey. As always, you can join us on Fridays at 6 p.m. to experience the live walkthrough of the Stations of the Cross. You can find us at 3837 West 7 Mile 
for the doors of the church are open. Welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church. Our opening hymn is Jerusalem by Happy Hawk, found on page two of your hymn insert. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. 
all desires of mine, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him. Live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 9 through 12. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day. They ate the produce of the land. And the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Amen. The appointed psalm is number 32, verses 1 through 12, and we will read by alternate verses. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven, and whose sin is put away. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. A reading from the second lesson, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter the 16th to the 21st verse. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. If anyone is in Christ, there's a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. 
that is, in Christ God, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trans, transpass, trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of making his appeal through us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Please stand if you are able and join us in singing our sequence hymn, Amazing Grace, found on page three of your hymn insert. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. 
So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. There he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he had come to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran his, and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fat calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you. And I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Please be seated. 
Miss Woods saw me this morning and said, wow. I am here wearing rose, not pink. <laughs> I'm wearing rose, not pink, because it is a visual break and a spiritual break from the good, holy work of Lent that I know we've all been doing, right? Right. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to confess our sins in a minute, so... This rose represents a reprieve, a refreshment, an opportunity to rejoice. And it is custom in the seasons of preparatory, such as Advent and Lent, with all the talk about repentance and preparing and all of the work that one must do to get ready to have just a little bit of a break. Because every now and then people need a little drink of water, don't they? And in the spirit of rejoicing, these are the words that fill me with joy and gladness when I looked on this Rejoice Sunday or Refresh Sunday. These words. I'll read them again in your hearing. And I know that a good Episcopal preacher is probably going to focus on the story of the prodigal son. But as y'all know, I didn't grow up with this page. <laughs> Hear the words that caused me to rejoice. It is this first sentence from our reading, the first lesson. The Lord said to Joshua, today, I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. When I first read those words, I started rejoicing in my dining room. Ask my wife, she was there. Because I immediately Recognize, thanks be to God, the power of that sentence. Today, I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And if you want to understand my joy, let me set it up for you. And I'll set it up like this. Most of us in this room are parents. All of us in this room have been children. And let me know if you've ever heard something like this. You're in the car, you pull up to the store, and your mother or father or caregiver gave you a speech that sounded something like this. All right, now, when we get in the store, don't ask for nothing. <laughs> don't, don't tell us. How about this one? Don't get in here and embarrass me <laughs> in the store. Anybody ever heard that? Anybody ever said that? <laughs> when you get in here, I want you to act like you have some sense. When you get in here, I want you to act like you have some home training. Because every now and then, we get to a place uh, where we need to have some ground rules, where we need to have some orientation. Dennis, I feel like I might be just a little too loud because I, I'm about to slap. You've landed, eh? I, I'm doing Every now and then, you get to a place in your life where you need to have some ground rules, where, where, where you need to have some orientation. And this is what's happening. The children of Israel have crossed into, crossed the Jordan River, they're getting ready to enter Canaan, and after years of the promise that was made to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, after years of living in Egypt, which was nice enough, but it wasn't the promised land, thank you, uh, after 
years of wandering around in the wilderness. They are finally yeah, it's cold at here. a place where they can finally go in to yeah, cave. That's for sure. And it is like God. I told you this morning, it was cold down. here. It says, all right, now before you get into cave, yeah, we so uh, uh, in straight. your car. Uh, you see, the 40 years in the wilderness, none of the men, none of the males had been circumcised. And okay, so well, the God well, of the covenant the back home safe and sound. said, before we get into this next phase, we have to make sure that the bases are covered. You have to oh, yes, sure Lord. That all you, of you, know, you don't have a class on And the mm -hmm. religious requirements for your relationship with me are covered. And so Joshua said, Oh, well, reasonable. And the yeah. men of Israel. And you got your babies waiting for you. And then God <laughs> says one more thing before we get into the land of Canaan. Today, I have rolled away have from you. Been, but if you are afraid, not because it is cold. In other words, before you get into Canaan, we have to address oh, your okay. past traumatic experience. Okay, okay, well. Because if we don't address okay. your past traumatic experiences, you oh. get into the land of promise as victory. Real talk. Real not talk. victory. Am I preaching already? Yeah. yeah. And you will go into the land of Canaan and do the exact same thing to others that the oppressor did to you. So before we get into Canaan today, I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. How many know that in this season of introspection, in this season of, of self-investigation, you might, if you are doing it well, have recalled or remembered something that was shameful or disgraceful, and you have repented and gotten right with God, and that's all fine and good, but if other people know, if other people have that same memory, you know God can forgive you of a sin, and people will never forgive you. Am I in church this morning? Yeah. Yeah. People will never forget. People will hardly forgive. And you will walk around, they're helping. You will walk around with a stigma, with a cloud hanging over you your whole life 10 years, 15 years, 20 years after the fact. And what God is saying is, I want you to return. Wait, to you're still making to the God is saying today, the disgrace of that now, what did you say? The disgrace of that thing is going from over you. Live your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh. Live your life. Because no matter There's what something what happening with uh, you, that does not on. define who you are. I'm almost done. So I'm going to get on the point. Let me say that again. No matter what happened to you, no matter who did it, no matter what, that does not define who you are. Well, preacher, what if I'm the one that messed up? Jesus said, the prodigal son left, took his daddy's money, went and squandered it, and then he did the unthinkable. If the men in the story were good Jewish people, the fact that he was reduced to working with the unclean animals as the king I mute. as insult okay. to Egypt. Okay, I have he it on mute. He was at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the pit. Hello? And he, Lord help me, Jesus. Hello? He conjured up the speech in his mouth that he was going to tell his father in order to get his father to love him again, in order to get his father to open the house to him again. I'm just going to say, Father, I know that 
I sin and you repent and it's heaven. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. If you would just let me work as one of your hired servants, I'll be glad to do it. And what does Jesus say? The father sees him afar off. And to the father's credit, he hears the speech. Dad, I've seen it. I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. You don't have to regard me as one of your children anymore. You can just treat me as a servant. You can just give me three hops in the pot and I'll be all right. <laughs> but you know what the father said? He didn't even respond to what the son said. He told the servant, go get me the best robe that you got. Go get me the nice ring. Go get me the nice sandals because my son is home. Because no matter what he did or said or where he went, it does not change the fact that he is my son. And I rose to tell you I rose to tell you no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, God says that you are his beloved, you are his son, you are his daughter, and no matter what happened to you, it does not define who you are. What happened to you was a mistake, and it was bad, but you are not a mistake. And as the reading from Corinthians tells us, people will always strive to regard you from the human point of view. Some people you always will be big headed. <laughs> Some people you always gonna be cool. Some people you always wanna be Ray Ray and they'll never see you. For more than the mistake you made 10 years ago, five minutes ago. But if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have what? Passed away. And everything has become new. No matter what you're going through, know that when you come and receive this spiritual manner, even in the wilderness, let it be refreshing to your soul. Come solemnly, but come rejoicing. Because any shame that you felt over sin or error. God does not hold it against you any longer. God has forgiven you. So allow yourself to be forgiven. Today, I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. Let the church say amen. Amen. Stand as you are able and let us proclaim the word of God and the word of the Nicene Creed found on page six of your book. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God for God, life for life, true God for true God, 
begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and accomplished by it. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have come. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, we give worship. And spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people is found on page seven in your bulletin. We lift our voices in unison to recite our mission statement. So that these words will be a constant reminder of our purpose in the community. Together, at all saints, we are called to be many stewards of our community, by strengthening our faith, serving the community, and spreading his love by power word and deed. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, and particularly for St. Paul de Romeo and St. Margaret, Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. For Michael, or presided Bishop Bonnie, or Bishop, and for Moise, Bishop of the Dominican Republic, Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig, bishops in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Please offer your own petitions at this time. For the sick and for all in need of your gift of abundant health, especially of this life. And you may offer your own thanksgiving. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Martin, Jacqueline, and Patrice, we will exalt you, O God, our King, 
and pray your name for her. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please offer your own petitions. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. And we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the of life, to the honor of your way Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please exchange signs of God's peace. God's peace. Thank you so much. Please be seated. We will continue our service with Holy Communion. We are receiving under one time only, so we will only have bread today in the season of we're trying to look out for one another and be loving toward one another and make sure that we're taking all of the necessary health precautions. Uh, and so when you come forward, uh, please come with your hands extended and I will place some of the consecrated bread in your hand. Um, again, please come forward if you wish to receive communion by placing your hands, your palms outstretched. I will place the piece of communion bread in your hand. All are welcome to this table who claim the faith of Jesus, who share with us in that baptized life, regardless of denomination, you are welcome to this table. And even at the same time, there is no pressure for anyone to receive. And so please go as you are comfortable with your own spiritual care, but please know that this is medicine for your soul. So if you're feeling a little sin sick, <laughs> come up your dosage. Okay? This, is, this is the sacrament. This is the sacrament of God's healing. This is the sacrament of God's forgiveness. If you are not feeling well, come to communion. Because Amen. we believe that God heals and God sets free and God delivers when you feast on him. Amen. Amen. All right. For all are welcome who wish to do that claim the faith of Jesus. For those who are watching online, thank you so much for sticking with us this far. And you can also participate in offering of your life and labor with the Lord by going to our website at allsaintsdetroit.org. And you can click on the giving tab and follow the instructions uh, there. For those of us who are in the house, uh, you can present tokens of your life and labor to the Lord. We call that cash. <laughs> <laughs> so you also can present tokens of your life and labor to the Lord by placing them in this offering plate that is here uh, to my left. That way we can minimize touch and passing the plate. It's all about being good neighbors to one another. Our offertory hymn is Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. 
that is found on page four of your pin insert. I happen to know that's a crowd favorite, so please sing it with the spirit of rejoicing, the spirit of this day. And softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling on page four of your hymn insert. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand with your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the pastor's feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this thing to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross. He offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son. The holy and strength of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Amen. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. The gift of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith to thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. As you prepare to come forward, our communion anthem is Deep River. We're going to hear the voice of Mahalia Jackson. The words are on page six of the answer, but this is an anthem that's perfectly acceptable for you to listen to a question. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singing of Christ. Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are able, please bow down before the Lord. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people. Who kneel before you and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacrifice may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join us in singing our holy hymn beneath the cross of Jesus. Found on page seven of your fifth instrument.
Please be seated for the welcome and announcement. Good afternoon, All Saints. My name is Roger Weeks, and I'm the Junior Warden. And I want to extend a welcome to first all those who are viewing us on Facebook and Zoom. I hope that today's worship, service, and fellowship in, in the Word have changed or will bring a change to you. And I hope that in the event that you're looking for a church home, you will consider all saints. And for those of who are here with us, I want to welcome you, especially our visitors, who, would I, who I would invite you to stand so that we can give you an all saints welcome. Please. Well, amen. Welcome. And for those of us who are here with us every Sunday and with familiar faces, I want to welcome you back. I know that today is a tough day, especially for me, in the sense that it was very cool and it started to uh, snow a little bit. But I braved the weather and I came out and I'm here worshiping with the grace of God. Again, I want to welcome all of you. And hope that today's message of worship and fellowship is a life changing for you. And that you'll come back and see us next Sunday at 11 30, 11 15, and then 11 30 for the Eucharist. Thank you. Good morning. Good <laughs> afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Juanita Woods. I'm the senior warden, Roger Weeks is our junior warden, and I have been given the privilege of reminding you of our announcement. So if you could take a minute to go to page 15 in your bulletin, we just want to highlight things that we think will be relevant, and we ask that you take it home and review all of the ongoing announcements at your leisure. Just as a reminder, the protocols we are continuing after COVID is to remind you to please follow those as outlined in our bulletin. And if you'll note, masks are no longer required during the service. It is an option for you, but please we ask that you follow the ongoing protocols that are comfortable to ensure everyone's safety. Our best reward will be next Sunday, April third at 3 p.m. on Zoom. Um, so please mark your calendar board members. And before you leave today, as you go, please see me. I have a packet that I need to give you in preparation for the meeting uh, next Sunday. Our men's club fish fry continues and things are going really well. So they've added next Friday, April 1st and April 8th. So if you did not get a fish fry dinner, please come out and support the men's club. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. It's carry out only. And we have catfish or perch. A sandwich is $10. And the meal is $15 with two sides. And you can please come out and support that endeavor. The money goes to support the ministries of the church. So it's April 1st, next Friday, and the following Friday will be the last one. Those of you who have joined the Lenten book study with Bishop Bonnie and Sister B, the last discussion will be this Wednesday, and we will be reviewing chapter seven. But please note that the series has been taped, and you can go to the EBOMI and listen to uh, the presentations for that particular book study. The renewal of vows and prison masks for clergy and mayors will occur on Tuesday, April 12th. 
this is uh, we'll be starting again in person services that was put on hold due to COVID. So you can come out on Tuesday, April 12th from 7 to 8.30 at the cathedral and it will be in person or live stream. So that is your option. Also, please note going to page 16, we are preparing for our Easter service. So the Easter flowers, we're encouraging you to make donations. If you're here in person, there is an insert in your bulletin. But those of you on Facebook or Zoom, you can go to our website to make a contribution for the flowers of the altar. And we ask that you make those contributions by Sunday, April 10th. We also are in the midst of updating our directory. There is an insert in your bulletin today. So please, if you have changes or if you don't think your information is correct, please complete the form and you can leave and put it in the offertory plate or give it to any vestry board member. I think you can take a look at the ongoing announcements other than a reminder about our, one of our outreach ministries, Crossroads, the last, well, this week is the last week that they're asking for this month, manual can openers and can meat products. So if you can take care of that and help us through our ongoing ministry, ministries, we would appreciate it. And so now a word from Reverend Estes. Thank you, don't worry about my preaching hand, get ready to go home. Uh, wanted to give a warm welcome to two people who are sitting in the audience here. We have Sister Alina and Pastor Rachel Collins, all the way from Gary, Indiana. Such a blessing um, to, to see you here and, and worship with us. And, uh, Pastor Collins has known me almost all my life, uh, so I'm always glad to see the saints of God, uh, especially in, in new places. So uh, thank you so much for coming, and so I wanted to give you an All Saints welcome. All right, well, um, that concludes the announcements. I hope to see you uh, this Friday. I did come and get some fish. Thank you, Mr. Price, and all the fellas, and uh, I'm going to come back again. Uh, it's good, y'all. And we do stations of the cross ahead of time. Sister Juanita leads the same. It's a wonderful time. So come on out on Friday. Um, and if a Friday night is not your thing, uh, please know that we are also doing stations of the cross at St. Matthew's and St. Joseph's Church on Wednesday at noon. And there is Eucharist after that service as well. So um, this communion of a different kind here on Friday night. Uh, with fish and bread, uh, but <laughs> St. Matthew's and St. Joseph's, this is just bread. Uh, so please, uh, it's, it's cool bread, uh, but you are more than welcome to come and worship with the people of St. Matthew's and St. Joseph's. Please stand for the dismissal as you are able. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God.